Hello grade 12 psychology class. Welcome back to another lecture. As you can see, we have lesson three, recognition, recall, and relearning. And then if you see the key points over here, uh, eidetic, flashbulb, and state dependent, these are all uh, titles that are on the slides that aren't these three. So I guess there's kind of like six key points. These three here, and then the three that are under the key points. I hope that makes sense. Uh, let's get right into recognition. So recognition or recognizing things. In order to store thousands of items in such a way that you can find a particular item when you're looking for it, the human memory needs to be efficient and organized. And the way that you organize things in your brain as a human uh, makes recognition reasonably easy. We can recognize faces, uh, houses, stores, items, pets, danger, uh, friends. We can recognize all of these things because of how our brain organizes information when we encode it. So chances are that, you know, you'll forget my name in a few years after you graduated, uh, maybe sooner if you don't care. Um, but if someone was to say my name, uh, you would recognize it. So recognition is easy, recall not so easy. Uh, maybe you'll remember my name, maybe you'll remember my last name but not my first name. Um, you know, um, depends on how much it is encoded or how well it is encoded into your brain. So the process of recognition shows how our memories can be reached in multiple ways. We can re recognize a piano regardless of the tune that's being played or if the piano is in tune or out of tune, if we hear it or if we see it or sometimes if we stub our toe on it, we may be able to recognize the piano. Um, the, no matter what a guitar sounds like, generally we can recognize that it's a guitar or if a, a song is being played on a piano or a guitar or on a trumpet, we can recognize that song. So we organize information in multiple different ways so we can reach it in multiple different ways. The more categories that a memory gets stored under, the more likely you will be able to uh, recognize it and pull up that memory. So diversifying where you store that memory uh, is important. Essentially, you know, you want to back up all your information, not only onto a hard drive, but onto Google Drive as well. Uh, you know, maybe onto OneDrive, so it's stored on multiple computers. You don't just want to have it in one place. Uh, you want to have all your information in multiple different places stored in multiple different ways. Recall. So recall is even more impressive than recognition because recognition has a stimulus input for us to then have an output of us saying yes or no, I, I know that or I don't. Recall is the active reconstruction of information within your brain. Uh, so when you think about recall, um, like you need it a lot to have a conversation. You need to remember each word and what it means. You need to remember what you, what idea you want to get across. And then you need to remember all of the grammar rules and English rules that you need to get that idea across in a normal way, not a gibberish kind of sense. Um, think about all that recall that you need to have a conversation. Each word, thought, or idea has to be retrieved from memory, stuck together, and then not only do you have to do that, the person you're having a conversation with has to sense it, has to uh, perceive it, and has to like make sense of it to have a um, response all in like a split second. Uh, our brain is pretty incredible. So. Recall is influenced by reconst reconstructive processes. That means that our memories may be simplified, they may be enriched, they may be distorted a little bit, we may add things, we may lose things. It depends on your experience, your attitude, your bias, what you're paying attention to uh, when you made that memory, what was your focus, what was your mindset, what experiences have you had that uh, allows you to reconstruct that memory. Uh, what attitudes do you have about it? Was it a good attitude about that or a bad attitude about that? People can remember things, the same event, in many different ways. Memory is very complex. So when recalling, we can make the mistake of confabulation. 
So confabulation is when a person remembers something that was never stored in memory. Uh, maybe there's a gap in your memory and you just like, you have a natural tendency to want to fill it in. Um, so you might like say that a person was there when they're not because you just want to fill in that gap. It was a different person, but you can't remember who it is. So you say that this person uh, instead was there. Our brain often fills gaps to make our memories more continuous. So confabulation is accidentally remembering something that never happened, and it's not like you're lying, you truly do think that that thing happened. Key point one, which is actually key point three, if you know what I mean, because the other two are actually key points as well, is eidetic memory, and you may have uh, heard of this before, um, essentially as a photographic memory. So. Uh, eidetic memories are a little different. About 5% of all children do not seem to reconstruct memories actively. Instead, they have an eidetic memory, which essentially they've taken a photograph. That's what we call it, uh, photographic memory. Um, in the form of a photograph memory shared by a uh, few adults. So you lose this, or lots of kids lose this, but so, and some adults do have it. So children with eidetic memories can recall very specific details from a picture or a page or from a scene that's viewed briefly, they'll be able to uh, pick out details that people uh, that don't have this type of memory would never be able to remember. Uh, and it's similar to what we call a photographic memory. So that's how you can remember, remember it. Eidetic means photographic memory, essentially. Uh, a flashbulb memory. So if you ask myself or your parents where they were on September 11th, 2001, they will likely remember uh, in vivid detail. And this is a flashbulb memory. So this phenomenon is called a flashbulb memory. These, these types of memories are usually uh, involving events that are very shocking or emotional. They involve uh, a society or a country, uh, a huge number of people. Um, and although the details that we remember are not completely accurate, uh, we perceive them to be. Um, because it was such a big deal. So you may have um, this type of memory ingrained in you already. Uh, I think that I have two. I have this one, 9-11, uh, and also where I was when um, I kind of learned that school would be shutting down for the pandemic. Um, lots of different people have lots of different kind of memories about when they learned that the pandemic was going to be uh, a problem, if you will. Uh, so this could be a, a generational flashbulb memory for you. Uh, every generation has these flashbulb memories, uh, depending on the country, maybe, uh, if there's a disaster, or uh, maybe even uh, where you live in that country, if there was a tornado, you, everyone around you may remember that, uh, where that, where they were when that happened. Uh, we have state-dependent learning, which is key point three. So state-dependent learning essentially um, occurs when you recall information easily when you're in the same uh, physiological or emotional state or setting when you originally encoded that information. So maybe you learned all your math in the morning, so doing the uh, quiz or uh, exam in the morning is also very important. If you listen to music when you study, maybe you need to listen to music when you're writing the test. Uh, sit in the same spot in the room. Uh, eat the same thing for breakfast. Get the same amount of sleep. Make sure that you're in the same state for when you need to remember something as you were when you learned it or when you encoded it into your brain. Uh, be in the same state, that's important. And then relearning, which is the last part of our title. Uh, relearning is the idea that you will likely learn things faster the second time you learn them. And I think that this is pretty common. Um, you guys have learned lots of stuff in early and middle school that when you get to high school, it's just a lot easier to pick up on it. Even if you didn't learn it as, in as much detail back then, uh, learning it once, learning it twice, learning it three times is very, very useful. Um, so relearning a skill in another class it's the reason that it sometimes classes overlap. Uh, you relearn a skill at your summer job for the second or third year in a row. Maybe how to drive in the snow 
you get to relearn year after year and you get better at it. It gets easier. You relearn how to play a video game after you put it down for six months and you're uh, not instantly, but quickly good at it. All of these are easier the second or third time around and that's because you've already made these connections. You just need to, you know, tidy them up a little bit in your brain. Okay, we have your job, so obviously important terms, and then an assignment about a flashbulb memory. If you have questions, please let me know. But thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I will see you soon.